So, uh, being as such, it is not a continuation of the reproductive system, but it is a part of the of the chapter population of your chat of your chapter population, which is the part uh, called as uh, methods of contraception. Now, uh, because of the a reduction in the portion the population chapter as such is completely cancelled but this particular part of the contraception is there in the syllabus so that's why i take this as a part of the reproductive system because anyway it is connected to that so uh, contraception is basically the method by which the uh, baby cannot be or you can the pregnancy is not hold so uh, the way to avoid pregnancy okay the methods of avoiding pregnancy is called as methods of contraception which is a part of family planning so uh, that is contraception the common methods of contraception are as follows first is hormonal method pills various hormonal preparations come in the form of tablets or pills commonly called as contraceptive pills these hormones prevent the release of the egg from the ovary so uh, this is the first method. Now this particular method is such that it is a kind of a medicine what you are taking. So that is a kind of a hormonal pill what you are taking. The pill what it does is it will not allow the ovulation to take place. So this uh, release of the ova from the ovary, uh, the ovulation is going to be stopped or it is going to be prevented by the use of this pill so the female will have her regular menstrual cycles and everything will be regular but the release of the ova from the ovary does not take place and hence there is no chance of the fertilization of the egg or pregnancy so that is called as hormonal method or pills the second is barrier method so barrier as we know the barrier we think yeah, you are not allowing the male and the female gametes to meet each other so if you are not allowing that means you are creating a barrier between the male and the female gametes so first one is condom for example nirod it is used by men only it is made of latex rubber sheath it prevents the sperm from being deposited into the vagina so it is this particular kind of a device. The condom is a balloon like structure which is worn on the penis before intercourse so that whatever the sperm is ejaculated is ejaculated within the condom so that it is not getting oozed out into the vagina. So uh, even after the sexual intercourse, the sperms are not going to enter into the vagina because they are going to be entrapped inside the rubber sheath which is worn over the penis the next is diaphragms so that is exactly the opposite of uh, the condom which is for males similarly for diaphragms will be for females so these are round latex caps with coil springs these caps can be fitted deep into the vagina on the mouth of the uterus or cervix these caps prevent the entry of the sperm into the uterus so these are some caps which are embedded which are put inside the uh, vaginal opening so that near the cervix so that they are going to be a kind of a barrier for the sperm to not enter into the uterine uterus area so that is why it is called as diaphragms and the third one is sperm killing spermaticide uh, <coughs> Agents. So these are chemicals placed in the vagina near the cervix which kill the sperms if they are there. So these are certain kinds of chemicals which will be uh, placed inside the vagina so that uh, if the sperm tries to enter over there, they, that particular sperm will get killed because they are the sperm killing kind of agents. So these were the barrier method. So barrier method is a method in which you are not allowing the male and the female garment to meet. That's how we are creating a barrier between the two. That's a barrier method. The third one are intrauterine devices. Now, intrauterine devices or IUDs. The two devices commonly used in India are lippy loops and copper T. These are fitted inside the uterus. These do not stop the fertilization but prevents implantation of the blastocyte. So, it is seen that if you see the uterus, the uterus is going to be like this. 
so this is the uterine wall so these loops or the copper t are something like this they are going to be a tube a t shaped tube like this with a thread over here so this tube is placed in this particular region in such a way that the sperm can definitely enter here the ova can be over here the sperm can reach over here but this ova cannot make, get implanted inside this particular thing the implantation is stopped because by this particular tubes the tubes the, the copper tubes or copper, uh, uh, copper tea is a tube which is not allowing the implantation to take place over here of this in the uterus so the intra that's why they call it intra uterine devices they are connected inside the uterus see up till now we had always seen everything in the vaginal area but here it is inside the uterus so that's why they are called as intra uterine devices whereas these are fitted inside the uterus they do not stop fertilization because the sperms are too small for it to stop okay they are too small for it to stop because it cannot give you an airtight seal tight thing over there but mainly it will not allow the blastocyte to come down and get implanted away so it, is, it do not stop fertilization but prevent the implantation of the embryo the fourth and the most important thing are the surgical methods. So in the surgical method, what we see over here is if this is the oviduct. So the first thing is you, the females can go for a cutting of this particular area and tying a knot over here. So there will be a knot, a thread knot put over here and cutting of this part so that the egg can reach here but cannot reach her at all so this is something like a permanent kind of a, a stoppage of pregnancy if you don't want if the female is not at all interested in getting pregnant okay she doesn't want to have a baby at all in such a case she can go for this operation which is a permanent kind of a cutting off so that is this particular thing because you are cutting off the tubes, the fallopian tubes, that's why this method is called as tubectomy. Okay, it's called as tubectomy because you are cutting off the uh, fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is cut, so litigation of the uh, fallopian tube is going to be called as the tubectomy. So, Tubectomy females, in this, the abdomen is opened and the fallopian tube, the oviduct, are cut or litigated. That is tied with, uh, it is either cut or litigated means it is going to be tied with a nylon rope. Tied with a nylon thread to close the passage of the egg. So, basically, if you feel, if the female is saying that, okay, she does, like, for example, there is a couple who has got a child and they don't want a second child in future. So in such a case, they can go for such a such a kind of a, a operation by which the tubectomy there is no possibility of getting a second child at all. But in such cases, there are two options. One is to cut this thing off. If there is cutting off, then definitely there is no option. You will never get a second child. And the other option is to tie this thing with a nylon thread so when they tie a nylon thread over here so egg cannot pass through the tray anyway so threads it's not tightly it will pass through it will and in case in case 5 years 10 years down the lane if the couple still for, uh, thinks of having one more child they can get this thread removed and it could be uh, again active for pregnancy so this could be an uh, option uh, which can be there so that is called as tubectomy so same kind of operation can also take place in case of males so in case of males we know that the sperms are going to be uh, transferred from the uh, from the testes to the uh, urethra by the sperm duct so we have this two testes and then this is the sperm Duct. So what they do is this sperm duct, they are going to litigate it or cut it. So either they are going to cut it and put it over here or they are going to tie a nylon thread over here so that the sperm cannot be reaching this particular cell. So the semen will be produced as usual 
there will be the erection of the penis as usual the testosterone production will be there but there would not be any sperm in the semen the semen will lack sperm okay that's why there is no possibility of pregnancy this is called as because the vas deferens which is being cut it is called as vasectomy So vasectomy is the method by which a male gets operated and the male uh, ka jo sperm duct hai, it is either cut or litigated uh, and uh, it is going to be uh, removed and uh, it is not allowing the sperm to reach the urethra. But as I told you the semen formation does take place so the formation of the, the secretion of the seminal vesicle so the fluid will be there the semen will be there the lubricant will be there by the uh, uh, corpus gland the uh, alkaline secretion of the prostate gland will be there so and all the uh, necessary things so the, the erection of the penis everything remains the same okay so all the sexual activities remain the same but without the fear if you want to consider it as because it's a contraception method that's so why without the fear of the female getting pregnant so that is called as vasectomy so in this surgery a small cut is made in the scrotum that is as vast difference uh, from each testis is, is litigated and a small piece between the two litigated is removed so a small piece between the two litigations is removed so litigated means the thread is tied over here and here and it is the which mega part is cut off and litigated over here so the surgery is easier quicker and safer see in this case because the scrotum is already outside the body and you need only a small cut to be made in the scrotal sac that's why it is not affecting the male body anyway whereas in case of tubectomy it for this the abdomen has to be cut and it has to be I mean, the operation has to be done in such a way that it needs to be a proper operation this, this is a proper operation taking place over here it is because the this testes are located out, almost outside the body so it's easier and safer so it is recommended that between the couple if it is better if the husband gets operated this operation are no harmful effects on manliness and of any kind nor it reduces the pleasure of intercourse or libido so it is not going to give any kind of a different form of a feeling for the men that his sperms are not being released because the ejaculation the sexual pressure whatever is going to be there is going to be remaining the same irrespective of this operation so that was the fourth and the uh, part of the contraception and the last part of contraception actually we would not call it as contraception because here the baby is already implantation taking place so the pregnancy is already being there but we are killing the baby or we are just aborting the baby that's why it's called as abortion or induced abortion or medical termination of pregnancy MTP if the woman has somehow become pregnant and the couple does not want to have the child or if there is a definite evidence of any serious genetic disease in the embryo based on a, a special test then the fetus can be removed so if the uh, couple was not opting for a baby and they have by unfortunate conditions due to some kind of a mistake somewhere the, ba the mother uh, the uh, female is pregnant and the couple does not want the baby or it could be happened that the couple found out by test that the baby which was which is going to be born has got some genetic defects in such a case the pregnancy can be aborted so that is the fetus can be removed this method should be considered a contraception it cannot be should not be considered a contraception method but as a last step that can be taken this operation force of abortion should be performed only by a trained doctor at a hospital abortion is legally permitted only within five months of pregnancy and can be requested by any desirous female at any government hospital at no cost 
for this even husband's consent is not necessary now this is something uh, legally which is there that the female has got the all the authority and rights over the baby as per the legal terms female has got all the rights over the baby so in case the female is not interested in having the baby then she has the full authority to go to any hospital and abort herself uh, without even informing the husband so it is this way that the female has got the full liberty to go through this thing now but of course that the abortion can be done only within five months of the pregnancy after five months you cannot abort the child one of the reason is also that after five months it is quite visibly known that whether the child is a baby boy or a baby girl so to avoid the female uh, for this i mean uh, uh, we don't want the female child to be killed in the womb itself so that is why it you are uh, not allowed in this way so five months is the uh, period maximum period by which the mother can go for abortion but after that it is legally uh, it is not possible for the mother to go for abortion because it is not legally allowed but of course uh, if some kind of a technical problem is any medical problem is there then maybe some kind of a exception may be there but there will not be an abortion but there will be some another means and ways by which uh, it will but of course it cannot be a reason for the girl child cannot be the reason for the abortion that's for sure uh, in this case so this was about the uh, contraception methods so we saw the five different methods over here first was the hormonal pills then the barrier method then the intrauterine devices the surgical methods the tubectomy vasectomy and finally is the abortion of course abortion is not a method of contraception because it cannot be something as in a uh, regular thing because it is very dangerous process as such Okay, you cannot. Uh, the the mother cannot go for abortion every now and then, so it is not advisable as such. So that is about the contraception methods of population control, right? Okay. So this was about the chapter. This is also the end of the chapter reproductive system. Okay. Thank you.